Well, um, I had some time, uh, so I wanted to do another video. I see that some people are, are watching these videos, and um, I, I wanted to share some of my thoughts on uh, various things, uh, especially uh, the impact that Ken Burns' uh, three-part series, The U.S. and the Holocaust, has had on me in various ways, uh, along with some of the readings I'm doing, etc. And uh, we can learn a lot of things from, from this uh, series, um, specifically, well, first of all, the, the great cruelty that can be inflicted on human beings by, by other human beings. Uh, the Holocaust of, of the Jews, uh, mostly Jews, uh, it included other people, you know, defectives due to eugenics, you know, trying to improve the, the species by killing off, you know, people with uh, various uh, infirmities, etc. And then, you know, uh, so-called gypsies, you know, Roma people or Sinti people, etc. And when you see uh, how, how basically Americans were against immigration, there's talk about building a, a huge wall. Even 24% even of Jews didn't want Jews to just be allowed in. 85% uh, of Protestants, 84% of Catholics, etc. There's a, a, a scene in the third part which I, I uh, need to complete watching where a, a very prominent Jewish person goes to see Felix Frankfurter, a Jewish member of the U.S. Supreme Court, that when I went to Harvard Law School, uh, there, there were stories about him, you know, a little guy, Jewish guy, when Jews were not that uh, easily admitted into some of these Ivy League schools. And he writes, you know, everybody was bigger than me, and, and I felt, you know, inferior and all these kinds of things, almost like the scouts that go into the promised land to, to scout it out, and they say we look like ants, they look like giants. Well, Felix you know, Frankfurter, uh, you know, brilliant, ended up on the Supreme Court. But he said, I am unable to believe the reports of this young man. One of the statistics that comes out in this series is that in 20 months, early on, you already had like 4 million Jews exterminated. And there's, uh, I think it's Himmler saying, you know, we did this for love of our country. Our conscience is clean, basically. Uh, we're not ashamed, and we were able to execute this mass killing, as dirty a job as it was with the smells and, and everything else, and even some sort of conscience. We were courageously able to execute the mass extermination of all these people. So here you have non-interventionists in the United States. Uh, they think the ocean separates them and it won't affect them until Japan uh, attacked on, on, in Pearl Harbor. Hitler said uh, Japan is a 3,000-year-old empire that has never been defeated, so we welcome these Asiatics basically uh, into our uh, alliance. So 
when I uh, see this history, the images and the narration, which is, I mean, Ken Burns by now has a first class, by now, I mean, he's, he's had it for a while, Jeffrey Ward, whose book I read on, on Franklin Roosevelt, the first class temperament, uh, brilliant uh, telescriptor now, uh, he's, they're calling him the telescript, and then Sarah Botstein, Botstein works with Ken Burns. So when you see the intelligence and passion that has been uh, manifested in trying to teach us about our history, recent history, the things that even advanced nations like the Germans with their philosophy, music, uh, poetry, all of historical studies, biblical studies, you know, the great cruelty that they are capable of when angry and humiliated after first, you know, World War I. Then this guy Hitler comes, and of course, clearly, these kinds of documentaries are meant to teach us about the kinds of situations we have now, given the fact that human nature apparently doesn't change, which brings is going to tie this into the whole idea of Christ. Um, we 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 have you know I don't know forty fifty percent of America looking to Trump as the, their bully, savior, messiah. And anything he says, he said it himself, I can shoot somebody in the subway. Now he's saying he can, just by thinking, declassify documents. And the fact that he can say that on Fox News or whatever, and it won't phase his followers, who have no appreciation of national security or the need to cooperate and observe laws. Trump didn't go to the inauguration. Trump says he won the election. Trump, you know, uh, does outrageous things. You know, all the documentation of his businesses. He bragged about not paying taxes. You can suspend your reason when you want to believe in a savior, and then facts don't matter. But I take comfort in the in seeing the work of principled, diligent people searching for the truth, especially about the U.S. and the Holocaust in this case. And you, I get inspired by the fact that there are good people and there are people of principle who, like the Jews say, 36 just persons keep the world going. Uh, good people, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinsinger, and others are, are keeping that light. Uh, on and I, I do these videos uh, in my humble way to try to speak out about what I am thinking about I wish I could have stayed at the seminary training future priests but all these seminarians hated Obama I never mentioned Obama Obama came on to my computer screen by default when I turned it on basically to put on Bible works. Uh, and they booed, these future priests booed, of course, as I've said, their spiritual director had behind him as he sat on his desk giving spiritual direction to these future priests Obama as the Joker. 
and that's why in this documentary it, 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 there's a, a guy there, Mendelssohn, I think, one of these uh, descendants of this famous family saying you could shoot you know people Saturday and Sunday go to church human mind is capable of juggling all these contradictions even Roosevelt that was known to compartmentalize I think he was a very principled and good man with defects just like Kennedy had defects, and you know John Kennedy and Martin Luther King, and every everyone I, everyone has defects and and, and peccadilloes. But you have to distinguish between being a total scoundrel and and being human with your faults. But um, when you see these these principal people producing with a great skill and great uh, ability to convince. And, and convinced by, by the research and the, and the information and the witnesses, then you uh, know that there is some hope, just like when you study the life of Gandhi, you feel there is hope, even though the end result of what Gandhi did is, is a flawed country, just like our country is flawed even though the head of the Nazi Americans had the picture of George Washington behind him when he spoke about the need to uh, get rid of Jews. The Jews will not replace us is a chant that is still being repeated. And in fact, uh, you know, and, and I was talking about, you know, thinking about Jesus and thinking, you know, the kingdom hasn't come. There's a lot of talk of hope, rebirth, new creation. I make all things new. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the risen Christ who ate with them, etc. Paul, uh, who has this conversion, if you will, uh, wants among the principal things that he desires is to have koinonia, to share, to be a partner in the sufferings of Christ. That is, uh, the Jews would say, Meshuggah, crazy, but it is better to be with Christ for a Christian suffering. Blessed are you who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. So the idea of principle, and I think Liz Cheney has shown that she knew she would probably lose the election in Wyoming. I have good, maybe dear friends who call her a scumbag only because they don't want to hear about January 6th. They don't want to learn that lesson, and they don't want anyone to criticize the, the creature they have put their trust and faith and hope in, Trump. So human nature doesn't, doesn't change. And Christ, what he brought as a change is sometimes very hard to know. You can shoot somebody on Saturday and go to church on Sunday. Here near near where I live we had another case of a priest who's dead now embezzling along with the help with the secretary of 1.5 million dollars from the church. We have the sex abuse all that stuff. You can be an armed band Christian and be a scoundrel, even if you don't even know it. You may be too stupid to know it. But that's our human condition. Which leads me, I mean, one of the, the title that I wanted to give to this was what we can learn from the Bible. I kind of <laughs> get carried away and forget uh, some of the basics sometimes, what we can learn from the Bible. But, um, one of the uh, Jewish uh, survivors of the Holocaust, who eventually married Otto Frank and Frank's father, 
I think it was her, maybe uh, some other uh, historian named uh, Lipstead or something, that what Anne Frank wrote in her diary, which I am reading at night, I still believe people are really good and that everything will turn out fine in the end or something like that. These one of these two one of these Jewish women said I don't think she would have written that later on. So when you think about it, a brilliant young girl and she's the symbol for a lot of people um, because she's Jewish. They have done nothing wrong. The family is an upstanding family. But because they are Jewish, they have to hide in this annex. So, again, I gave up. My last, I think, video was Know Thyself was one of the big topics. If you don't want to know who we are as a species and what we've done, not blabbed, but done or failed to do, um, then, then you know, there's there, there's no progress possible. But to think that you you have to, you know, stable families, uh, you know, pro family, pro life, all this stuff, stable families leading a normal life, all of a sudden, because of demagogy, the Jews are responsible. We want to mobilize the nation. As, as, as at the same time we're making better planes and marching and having great demonstrations and making the trains run on time or whatever fascist governments do that people are happy about the dark side is very very dark and it has to do with finding scapegoats Trump apparently and DeSantis apparently cannot succeed without blaming the Central American immigrants I said that I switched to Fox News during the Capitol assault and they had the assault of the immigrants from, from Mexico to distract attention. That's how you manipulate people and have them not learn until it's too late. I said last time it took 12 years for the Third Reich that was supposed to last a thousand years to be exposed finally as uh, a total sham and defeat and horrible thing. And so uh, trying to teach people is, is incredibly, incredibly difficult. But, you know, uh, my message is that uh, in general, and this may, may result in subsequent programs, I, I don't want to go too long uh, today at least, what can we learn about the Bible? What does the Bible teach us? So what can we learn from it if we, are, if we, we want to learn? Well, it's a, a huge mural of the history of a people. And, and the foundational story, if you will, is the liberation from Egypt, from slavery, from a pharaoh who did not know Mo, uh, Joseph and who oppresses the Israelites. So the foundational story is we were slaves, we were exploited as, you know, Israelites. And, and through the leadership of Moses, we were led out to a promised land flowing with milk and honey. And the Bible then will recount a cycle which is a, a human cycle of well-being, letting your guard down, sinning, being punished, having to have someone, maybe one of the judges, rise up to defend you from the attackers and enemies, being saved 
and then going back to uh, a good situation, and then again letting your guard down, and the cycle is repeated until uh, the catastrophic Babylonian exile at the end of Kings, at the end of what the Jewish, Jewish canon calls the former prophets, and then in the Babylonian exile, there is a conversion to Judaism proper, which is strict monotheism, no images, circumcision, which has something to do with uh, reproduction symbolism, a kosher diet, which is a way of separating yourself from pagans who don't know the true God and who don't have laws as wise as we Jews have. And it's a, a religion centered on, on legal observance, which is much better than not centered on, on legal observance. Christians have, and in the New Testament, uh, there is a lot of polemics about the legalism of the Pharisees. And certainly, Jesus, I think, came into conflict with Pharisees who had an interpretation of the law and its legal requirements based on their tradition or notion of a double revelation, written Torah, oral Torah, or tradition, and Jesus objects to many of the things of that oral Torah, legal teaching, halakha, by saying that in some cases it contradicts what the written Torah says. For example, honor your father and mother. You say no, uh, according to the oral interpretation. We find ways of, uh, you know, sort of interpreting these laws. And if you devote your property to the temple and call it korban, then that property doesn't need to be used to help your parents. Mark, Mark 7. So Jesus is against that, and, 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 and I, you know, said that um, there is a great similarity between Roman Catholicism, which has scripture, and then a sac you know, sacred tradition, and uh, rabbinic Judaism has uh, written uh, scripture and uh, an interpretation of that scripture, which is now you know, written in the Talmud, but nevertheless is, goes beyond what, and adapts, and probably very intelligently so, what was written in the Torah, just like Catholics adapt things that are written in, in their Bible. You know, no one plucks an eye out if it offends you or cuts your, your hand off if it offends you. So, so, but, but, but we always have to be watching out for um, when it is that we are trying to interpret things away. And, and I was talking about, I was thinking about anger and, and how anger is, 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 is problematic. And how I sometimes watch myself and say, am I saying this because I am angry and disguising it as an observation? Or do I really need to say this? And I always think back to uh, maybe one time that Jesus is said to have become or, or expressed wrath, ire, or great anger. The Greek word is orge, O-R-G, eta, the long Greek E, and it's when he asks regarding this man with the paralyzed hand, withered hand in Mark 3, is it licit, is it okay to heal on the Sabbath or, or not, to save a life or destroy it and the crowd uh, or the leaders don't want to respond. 
I saw Mitch McConnell the other day in this documentary you know, with a kind of a grin uh, when asked uh, if, if, if Trump had, had lost the election or not early on, I guess. So, so Jesus could get angry, and he got angry at, at hypocrisy. He was provocative because it seems that at least the Gospels portray him as waiting for the Sabbath, or at least on the Sabbath is when he precisely violates this Pharisaic halakha, legal interpretation of what you can or can't do on Sabbath. There were various schools that had different opinions, and when rabbinic Judaism took over after the destruction of the temple in AD 70, pluralism basically disappeared. Just like in, in Roman Catholicism, dissenters, Gnostics, and other people like that were basically, you know, uh, pushed out, and, and the church uh, kind of... Uh, becomes politically very powerful, not kind of, but does after it becomes a legal religion with Constantine. And then it starts uh, advocating uh, legislation against the Jews. So we have a, a horrible history, a horrible nature, which um, you have to really ask, what has Christ accomplished? And I would say uh, that he, he, he's, he gives us hope if we, we want it. Uh, and, and he gives us the ability to identify with him in his passion, as Paul says in Philippians 3. Because the image of, of Christ in the passion, carrying the cross or carrying the cross beam after having been scourged and ridiculed as a kingly pretender, messianic pretender, crown of thorns, spittle, all these things. I'm reading a lot about how, you know, according to some people, everything came from reading the prophets and then they imagine that it happened to Christ, but nobody doubts he was crucified by the, by the Romans. Nobody doubts that crucifixion involved prior flogging. No one doubts that crucifixion was horrible. No one doubts that he carried the cross beam of the cross up to Golgotha. And even though there are people that have written, Luisa Picarreta and many others have written about the, the passion of Jesus with all its gory details, whatever you know, approach you want, we can still identify with a suffering man unjustly condemned, who said very harsh things that today many people who consider themselves Christians would have also said back then, crucify him, crucify him. They don't have enough self-knowledge. They don't think enough. And therefore, they are easily manipulated. When I hear this business about, yes, a, a, a very unruly immigration system, but it could be solved if we cooperated, but even, even in, with the Nazi Holocaust, they didn't let Jews in. Cuba didn't. The Jews bribed the Portuguese when the Spaniards expelled them in 1492 to allow them to stay, and the Portuguese reneged on the deal. And then the Jews had to go looking for some other place to go. Well, a, a, a corrupt Cuban, fellow Cuban, in, in Paris sold the Jews all kinds of visas at great prices to go on the, the ship St. Louis to, to Cuba, and those visas were all invalidated. It's a horrible history of lying and cheating and killing, and it does not help to deny it. But when we identify with, with somebody like Jesus, we identify with a just, righteous 
person. And if we are Christians, we believe that God vindicated him. That he's really now the Kyrios, the Lord. That's what Paul experienced. And uh, I guess I'm not as short as I wanted to be, but I wanted to uh, say something about what I was thinking about, considering this program that I saw. Paul, of course, was a Jew, as was Jesus, Mary, the apostles. And, and Paul is in anguish about the fact that most of his people did not accept Jesus that Paul had experienced as actually the Lord. That he had, had been persecuting because Jesus said, whatever you did to the least of these brethren of mine you did to me or didn't do, you didn't do to me. That's what people forget about. They find every kind of way. They say Jesus and guns, no immigration, no abortion. No abortion might be a great thing, but it doesn't happen because you criminalize it. Eliminating abortion is like waiting for the kingdom of God. Now, you might feel good having the badge that you are in favor of making it a crime. But if you don't lift a finger, you lay burdens, but don't lift a finger. Jesus says in Matthew 23 against the scribes and Pharisees. Then uh, you're fooling yourself, which is, you know, we say in Spanish, our daily bread. You know, fooling ourselves. But what Paul does in Romans 9 through 11 is to try to grapple with this anguish that he feels because his kinsmen have not accepted Jesus. And he says a whole bunch of stuff. But one of the things I wanted to focus on is that he talks about his ministry as trying to make Israel jealous trying to make Israel jealous. So when Christians reveal themselves to be truly messianic people, because the whole wisdom of the Jewish revelation that Jesus says he brought to fulfillment in, in Matthew 5.17, I did not come to abolish the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill them, not a little little dot or cross of, of, of the law shall be eliminated. Heaven and earth will pass away before. Um, if we really show the Jews that what the Torah was meant to do, Christ enables us to do it better. Your righteousness has to surpass that of the scribes and Pharisees, says Matthew 5, 19, I think it is. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what Paul says is that he's trying to get uh, Israel to become jealous of Christians. And I've said many times before, we have a long way to go. So what did I what, what was what was some of the stuff I got out of this documentary? It's very strange when you think when I think about it. It's almost uh, I mean I've had a long standing admiration for for Judaism. Not primarily because of the observances. Many Jews aren't even observant but because in that conversion in the Babylonian exile, which forged a strictly monotheistic, I would say unsuperstitious faith of separation from corrupting influences, you can interpret it that way, which is precisely what has brought the Jews persecution throughout 
the centuries. A people dwelling apart, says the book of Numbers, I think 22 or 24. They maintain their identity. They maintain their customs. In many cases, they were forced to dress differently. You see those Jews in Israel in the heat, dressed like they came from a Polish shtetl. Some of those vest, uh, clothe, uh, clothe, some of that clothing is because it was imposed on them. So they are stubborn that way. But you have to look at the good side of that and the tradition of study, the tradition of diligence and frugality. All those things can be easily interpreted as making the Jews light to the goyim, light to the pagan nations, the ones who aren't Jews. And after the Holocaust, where two-thirds of the Jews were eliminated, how many of them have not risen up again? Some abuse, like Gentiles also abuse, but the, the wisdom and tenacity of that ethos, of those customs and habits forged during centuries and centuries, is a sign to anyone who's, you know, my friend likes to say, belly aching, complaining, poor me. It's a, it's a story of strength. It's a story of survival with humor, with the ability to, to laugh and to make others laugh. Jews are, have played a big role in movies. One of my 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 criterion or criteria if you're en if you hate the Jews and if you're envious of people who are successful that's on you that's a bad thing and that's what we have in America today people that are angry at themselves partly because maybe they weren't uh, blessed with many talents but if they hid that one talent they got uh, they can't be jealous of the one who got maybe more talents and multiplied them and yes we have to have leaders who are just and righteous like the king was supposed to be in Israel, in, in Psalm 72, judging, in other words, rendering justice to the poor, the miserable, the ebionim, the dalim, uh, you know, these less fortunate people, that's what makes you like a king. When you are, there's always somebody poorer than you. They could be immigrants or persecuted. So I think that's the hope. And Christ became a king following that route. And that to me is, is where hope lies in, 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 in identifying with righteous people. Gandhi, Christ... And, and Christ as the, the embracing one, not uh, the crusader with enemies against whom the sword is used. He already has a passage which, which says, put away your sword. Turn the other cheek. We have to interpret that. He didn't turn the other cheek when the servant of the high priest in the Gospel of John hid him in his cheek. He said, why do you hit me if I have spoken correctly? But nevertheless, the message is not 
that of Father Coughlin, who's in this documentary, this priest saying, you know, hate the Jews, and he had his followers all armed. I put, you know, the devout Catholic followers of Father Coughlin, finally removed. We have a horrible history, but there are points of light. And my prayer is that people can not only turn away from the loud media and the commercials and the demagogy, but in that silence really be able to hear the voice of God and I, I know it's incredibly hard because you can be a person of prayer that I've known and be totally confused in your head about what is right and wrong. No discernment, which is what the Pope has recently spoken about. The Gospel of John, all these devout characters that are called the Jews, everybody's Jewish, but these ones that are called the Jews, they can't discern that Jesus healing on the Sabbath is doing the work of God. He is sent from God. And that lesson is not so we can hate Jews, but we can look at the Pharisee in ourselves, preferring a little manual that we are comfortable with to the voice of God saying, get out of your comfort zone and listen to the gospel. Sine glossa, like St. Francis, without these sugary explanations that make it make the medicine go down or maybe not even go down just enjoy it in your mouth so um i hit my time limit again um i just wanted to share this because i think it's it's important